This is a grain of salt, or rather a large piece of rock salt for making ice cream. And this is to remind you to take this video with a large grain of salt because the 1500 gliding wing that I am testing in this video is a pre-production wing. And that fact, along with my own personal biases, my style, and my experience, and the fact that my Waydo Flyer 1 is an original Kickstarter Waydo Flyer 1 and is now approaching three years of age, is all different things that you should consider that may or may not apply to your own experience in the future with this wing. All right, so let's move on to the video. I was only able to test this wing a couple of times and only with the new Waydo jet, largely because I had difficulties keeping it tight and secure to the fuselage of the drivetrain. These difficulties, I believe, came from two different reasons. The first being the fact that I have bolted and unbolted wings from the fuselage hundreds of times and the inserts are probably worn out. Also, the new wing is very thin in the back and requires a different bolt in order to secure it. And for these reasons, I may have had difficulties. I got everything tightened down as much as I can without feeling like I'm gonna kill something. <laughs> I also used some thread locker blue so it's removable and I brought an extra allen key just in case it loosens up a third time and we're going to see what minimum power it takes to lift off with the gliding wing, the original stabilizer, my 170 pound weight and the jet. Try 11 out. Eleven. You can get eleven. How about ten? I'm guessing not ten. Okay, gliding on the water. Try to get some speed up. Nope. Ten is not gonna do it. So minimum takeoff speed is power eleven. Trying to find my footing here that I like. <laughs> Just gotta get used to the new wing. New wing jitters, right? Power level nine. All right. No pumping necessary at power level nine, but I feel like level eight is gonna be the pumping speed. Level eight. Yep. Can't stay up with eight. So, we're gonna do a range test with the gliding wing 1500, similar to what I did with the patroller wing. The patroller wing, I was using power level 12, which was one level higher than minimum flying speed. So I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna do one level higher than minimum flying speed. So we're going to go to power level 10. So this wing is going to be possibly about 10% more efficient based off of speed. Power level 12, power level 11, and power level 10. And let's do it. Range test, efficient, mellow riding, range test. I might use 11 here and there because this is definitely really slow. And I'm going 11 miles per hour. I'm barely hitting 12. So I'm still getting two miles per hour faster than the speed setting that I set the remote at. All right, let's test out some breaching on the big giant wing. Very easy recovery. Woo. Even at slow speed.
so cool. Lake Powell is the best, everybody. The best. So much fun and an adventure. So, I do not recommend a high aspect wing for beginners, and most anyone else in the community would say the same thing. Even though they can be pretty stable with lots of lift, your movements with a very long wingspan are not what you would expect. So, the tiniest movements can make a big change with the high aspect wing. Or another way to look at it, it takes a longer time to make that change. And in some ways, it takes a shorter tilt to make that change. So <laughs> it's a weird combination of longer, easier, harder. So when you have a long wingspan, those wingtips are creating a really big circumference. So if you look at my arm outstretched, if I make just a little tiny angle adjustment, my arm goes up quite a bit but if I shorten my wingspan then that movement only makes a little bit of a circumference change at the tip at the end but if I extend the wingspan that little angle change is huge so you have to start making your turn sooner and if you're a beginner there's a good chance you're gonna start doing a domino effect of overcorrecting and then overcorrecting and then overcorrecting again until you find the crash so, long wingspans, high aspect wings are generally not recommended for beginners. So another analogy you can think about is playing with a sword or stick, or even this selfie stick. The longer the sword, the longer the stick, the more difficult it is to hold out at length, and the slower it is to be able to move it, because you're way out here versus being closer and I can move it quicker but if I'm really long long sword long stick the movements are much slower Woo! and then if the board dips into the water you're gonna have less recovery because now you have the board also weighing you down into that tilt so if you have your sword down and then you have the edge of the board down you have even more resistance to pull that sword back up to pull that wing back up through the water and to pull the edge of the board back up out of the water so edge touchdowns are going to be less forgiving Especially when you're running at only an increment above minimum flying speed. Otherwise, I could add more speed and help pull myself out of it. But that one, I wasn't prepared for. <laughs> so it's better to hit the rollers straight on because if you hit them on the side, then your sword is going to go like this that long wingspan whereas the shorter wingspans are going to be less affected so a shorter wingspan is just going to kind of go like this in the waves but a bigger one is going to it's going to really go up and down so when you have a long wingspan especially if you're not used to it you want to try to hit the waves right on perpendicular not parallel it's going to depend on the type of wave, I'm sure, but generally I find it easier just to hit them head on. Bend your knees, try to go just barely higher than the crest of the wave. You may need to change the power going up and down in your stance. I believe this wing, paired with the folding prop, will have high potential for surfing waves of the ocean or poaching waves behind a wake surf boat. Unfortunately, this was at the end of my ride and the wing was starting to loosen up even despite that I had put blue thread locker on the threads of the bolts. But I might not have waited long enough for the blue thread locker to dry a little bit before installing the wing. 
And here are the results of the Waydo Jet paired with the Gliding Wing 1500. Again, I am 77 kilograms or 170 pounds. And it was a really fun ride. I really enjoyed testing this wing and I would have loved to test it out further. But the difficulties with it loosening up just made it really difficult for me to want to continue to try testing it out. Because that long wingspan, once you get a little bit of a jiggle in it, it's even more jiggly, <laughs> so to speak. The tip of the fuselage of some Kickstarter e-foils was breaking, and in order to mitigate this problem, Waydo sent out this strengthening hardware kit, and this is the adapter for the patroller wing installed on the 1500 wing. But here is the patroller wing, and I'm showing how much play is in the wing with the adapter installed so that we can compare with the adapter installed on the 1500 wing here. And the play is about the same, but you do notice it a bit more simply because the wingspan is longer. As I mentioned, we're drawing a bigger circumference, and so that movement is going to be larger end-to-end -end with a longer diameter. And here, we're using the normal bolt in the front, and then the bolt that goes with the stabilizer, the rear wing, to put in back. Because the back is very thin, as you see here. And now the bolts are the same length underneath. So here we are not using the strengthening adapter. And you can see that there is more wiggle room in the wing without that adapter on the top. Which acts as a washer, if you will, to make it more stable. So in my personal opinion, in the future, I would love to see Waydo move to a three bolt pattern or a T shape pattern so that there's two bolts in the back and one bolt in the front. And this will make the wings even more stable. However, it will unfortunately lose the compatibility with previous models of all of the accessories and that's been one of the things that I've really enjoyed about Waydo is how they've made all of their upgrades and accessories compatible all the way from the get-go of the Kickstarter Waydo Flyer 1 all the way up until current. Once again, remember your supplemental grain of salt, and remember to live life to the foilist always.